Okay, I'm pulling the carburetor apart tonight and a lot of you know how to do it and more experienced than I am. I've only done about three ever. So, three or four. So, just a word of advice for someone who's new to it. These screws on the bottom here can often be mashed up by previous people so they can be really difficult to get out and if you force them with a screwdriver you'll end up rounding them off so the way I do it I get the best clean it all out get the best fit possible and then I use an impact driver but I don't you can't go hitting it with a hammer you just hit it with the base of my hand and that sends a shock through it but failing that if you can see that it's that it's still about to mash it up I put a mole grips on on the edge and just help it along uh, also it's because these are quite badly damaged it's best to replace them with new ones when you put it back together if you really can't and you have to uh, I put the worst one on the most accessible area so the worst one would go where I've got the most room to use the grips on it rather than the screwdriver okay also you need a good light get a good work light get all your tools out Get your towel out so the little screws and springs don't bounce onto the floor. And pots ready for putting the small parts in. Also a pen and paper to write down all the jet sizes that you find inside so you can compare it with a book and do your tuning which way you think. I'm going to do the top first. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm taking it apart to clean it and also to check what needle position it's on because it's a American model so they might be running on the second clip down but I'll want to run it on the third clip down. They were really difficult. I thought they were going around. But it's important to stop as soon as you feel it rising out, you know it's not fitting right. You can see how dirty this carb was and it's got some some real thick residue. I'm not even sure what that is at the top. And they're running it on fourth so it's one two three it's in number four so it'll be interesting to see what jets they were running i'll make a note of where it was as well Also make a note of what needle they're using. It's really hard to see. I think it's a B53D. Don't think this bike has run in a long time. Look at the state of that. And 
the float is stuck. Yeah, that is stuck. Okay, the float needle is stuck. I don't want to pull it or I'll bend the tongue, the adjustment. This looks all this red, red oily residue. It looks to me like it's um, air filter oil, too much air filter oil, and it's been sucked through the carb. Because the air filter is really sticky with oil, too much, and it's all in the bowl. Okay, the floats unstuck itself with when I use the carb cleaner on it. You can see the float is now moving, but I still got to get it out, and the pin is jammed. Pilot jet, so much gunk on it and dirt, it was stuck in there. Okay, let's have a look. Here we are. So much dirt on this. Look at that. A card lump. Let's see what it is. Looks like a 65S. 65S. I think it was 68 and a 68S in the book. A 65. Can you see that? 65 S. Okay. The main jet has got so much dirt on it. There's no way this bike would have run. Uh, try and get the focus. Don't think I'm going to get the focus. That's a 175, 175 main. Might have some trouble getting that pin out. So I'm going to soak it overnight. And maybe get a small drill bit just to push it out. I'll leave it soak overnight because I don't want to break that. Okay, my new carb kit has arrived so I can put uh, start building it back. You remember in the earlier the carb was in a real mess. I've I've cleaned it up now on this here. It's about as clean as I can get it. I put it through a parts cleaner about five times. Uh, I should really use an ultrasonic, but um, I haven't got one of those. I should invest in one. But I'm going to give it a go and if it doesn't work, I'll pull it back apart. So, here we go. The slide, I've really cleaned this up as much as I can. Because on all big singles, 
what tends to happen is the throttle seems to stick on big singles but it's actually not sticking what's happening when this when you rev in and this is open and then you close the throttle and the bike's still running when you go back to open the throttle it seems like the throttle's stuck and it it does that jerk but what actually happens is so much suction on the engine when there's a bit of wear in them it pulls this to the side and it actually causes a bit of resistance and it gets stuck so i clean these up as much as i can just with a soft cloth a bit of three and one oil and really clean it up polish it up as much as i can so it uh, It'll still stick a bit because the vacuum will actually pull it against the side of the car, but uh, we'll see how it goes now. Also, one of these screws was really mashed up. Can't quite see it there. So I'll be replacing that with, with some new screws. Gotta be careful you don't damage a needle because when you put this in the needle's coming out the bottom. Gotta be very careful, don't damage it. Okay, that's the top done. I forgot to mention uh, what jetting I'm using. Uh, I'm going to go with a 65S for the Pilot, 175 main, and the needle position was a fourth down from the top. Now I know a lot of people say three down from the top, and I usually run three. But this bike had it on four, it had the correct jetting, and it's got a full exhaust, so maybe the guy who did it last knew more than me so i'm curious to see what it's like on on fourth down from the top on the needle so i'm gonna try it on that also i got the new air cut off valve the old one looks pretty rough and crumpled so Don't forget this tiny little seal goes by there and the new spring compared it with the old one. There's a big difference there in the height of the spring. So I don't know if this is just because this has gone old. And we'll try the new one. Could be that this has gone old and it's shrunk in time. This one's definitely stiffer. This only goes one way. Make sure you got that tiny airway lined up with that seal. So I like that. Put the spring in. That's the air cut off valve done. Okay, so we're halfway. Throttle works. Air cut off all done, gaskets and seals. Right, let's get to the bottom. It's the bottom sometimes I struggle a bit with. I always compare the new parts to the old parts, just in case. This new one has got this little pin here, which is still springy, and the old one, it's totally flat. It looks like it's missing, but it is there, but obviously the little spring is gone. So I'm glad of changing that. 
Put the needle seat in next. That's it. And it's the narrow side up with a wide opening up. The thicker opening down. I'm going to check that it's seat in right, so I'll open the throttle and it should stick through stick through on the base here and as you can see it's not so I'm going to push it through gently Being careful you don't touch the needle. As you can you can see now it's but I, you can see it sticking through. Okay, just in the floor tight. And adjust the seat. Right and 16 mil. So that's about 17. I'm happy with that. So it can be a tricky bit. The overflow pipe there. You want it to slot in between the baffle. There's a slot, you see there, through there. Okay. It's a new o-ring for the float bowl drain. And a new o-ring for the plug. I always check the same as the old parts. That's the same. Okay. New spring washer and seal as well. And these parts are tiny, so you've to be careful. Okay, the pilot. Mixture screw, got a new one. Always check it's the same as the old one. The sizes are the same. That's good. Okay, the way I do the pilot mixture screw, I put a tiny drop of 3 in 1 oil on the thread. Because they always seem, the thread always seems tight after a few months on the bike.
Then I go spring, carefully don't touch the tip. Then the washer. And then the seal. I've had a few bikes so that's in a different order. But that's the order in the in the manual. Spring washer seal. And the seal is always stuck in the carb. But you can fish it out. I usually use a paper clip or a piece of wire. Tighten it in till it sits. And feel the tension on the spring. That's it. Then I'm going to go one and a half turns out before I do my testing and set final settings. And there it is then. Okay back to the choke flap. It's been repaired, straightened and new screws in and retapped. Uh, as you can see the screws are too long so I'm just going to trim them down and then attach it all and attach it back to the carb. Just mark them off. Find the tension on the spring. Got it there. Hold on. I want to check a minute. Okay, we don't want to put too much pressure down or we'll bend that shaft again. So I'm going to put my little finger in behind to support it. Tighten these up. If you saw the last video, that was really stiff, you couldn't turn it. Now it's working as it should, and it's under tension.
Okay, we have the chalk working. So the chalk is on there. Three positions. There. Chalk is off there. Half on. Full on. Let's check these one more time. Chalk on. Half off. Chalk off. And check the throttle slides working. Full throttle off. Okay. Hold for the throttle adjust. That's the carburetor fully rebuilt. I hope it'll be okay. Before I try it on the bike, I will run few wheels through it on the bench here to check if the flow tight is set correct and the end is not overflowing. So the chokes work nice and free. And the throttle is nice and free. The carbs fully rebuilt.